Hey, what's up everybody? It's Isaac from Alchemy here with episode 10 of the Alchemy Devlog. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about what's new, like an integrated knowledge base. You can save journal messages, we've got fixes for game invites, and more. I'll also take a few moments to talk about what the team's working on, what you can expect in the next couple of weeks, um, and answer a question that's come in from a viewer. Uh, I also may take a few moments to peek at our Kickstarter, and maybe I've got some secrets to reveal there too. Stay tuned for that. Let's dive in. First up, let's take a look at the shiny new knowledge base. So in Alchemy, on the left side navigation bar, you've got this question mark help button here. Clicking on that will bring up the new index for the knowledge base. We used to have kind of frequently asked questions here. That's all been replaced with an awesome knowledge base. So this is the index. You can click into each one of these sections to go to um, another sort of table of contents for each section. So let's take a look at these. We've got a section for players, how to create a character, join a game, and be an awesome player. Game masters, guides, tips, and tricks for the forever GM, we got you. Streamers, use Alchemy to sling your stories onto the interwebs for all to see. World builders, craft lore, create characters, build scenes, and canonize your adventures. Account, manage your account, subscriptions, purchases, and safety preferences. And we've got some tips for creators. Are you a creator partner? Let's get you set up and selling on the marketplace. We also have links to our Discord server here and to our Twitter, um, so you can jump out there onto the internet and uh, get in touch with those uh, with us on those links there. Let's click into one of these sections and see what it looks like. Uh, let's go to players. So we've got um, an index page here for player articles, and you can click in to read about the player orientation, for example. And this is a nice big article that talks all about how to use Alchemy as a player. Um, we've got a nice overview here with images. We've got a walkthrough of the UI and more. What those little images mean in the party panel, very, very helpful legend here. Uh, and all that good stuff in here. Um, at the top of the article, we have these breadcrumb navigation links, so you can go back up to the player's index, or you can go back up to the base of the uh, knowledge base, that index article. So click around in here, have a look. If you ever need to know how to do something, it's probably in here. And if it's not in here, we have a feedback form for that. I will put a link for it down below in the description. Please send us your feedback um, on that form, and we will integrate more things into the knowledge base. Um, we're also going to be working on a search feature for this eventually, but that's probably a little ways out. Okay, next up, let's take a look at how to save journal messages. I'm going to close the knowledge base, and I'm going to create a new game for devlog10. Um, I will make it just a plain old 5th edition game with nothing in it. So, um, by default, when you send messages to the journal or roll dice, those messages are ephemeral, meaning they're only here for the people who witness them and then they're gone after that. If I reload this game page, those messages are gone. However, for um, you know long running games where you may have um, more exciting things going on and you wanna save those messages forever and uh, refer to them for posterity's sake or for you know historical reasons, you can go into edit your game and scroll down to the middle of this settings section here and there's a new option, save journal messages, persist journal messages across game sessions. Turning this on will cause all of those messages to be saved so that they're there for you forever. 2d20, let's do it. This also works for things like images. We'll paste that link in there. Uh, dice rolls, I can even do like GM actions. We'll do a dice roll for here, 1d4, and we'll do 1d6. Roll that action on out there. And anything you do as an NPC, if you had NPCs in this game and they did their attack actions, um, you know, stuff like that, we'll put an Aboleth in here. I'm always using Aboleths, maybe because they're at the top of the list. 
and we'll show that guy and play and use its mucus cloud attack uh, tentacle attack let's do something a little more exciting there we go that's a fun one. Okay, so all those messages are there. I have saving enabled, so if I reload this, uh, all those messages should load right back in, and indeed, they do. Hooray. It works. Um, so if you ever want to um, disable this for some reason, like if you wanted to um, not have, you know, you're doing some game prep and you wanted to turn off persisting so that uh, your players didn't see your uh, Aboleth's um, stuff, you know, if you were testing out an NPC and you added a new action to it and you wanted to roll it, but you did not want that to save, we'll put this tail action in as our example. Um, this one would only be visible to players who were connected to the game when it was sent. And reloading will, of course, remove that tail message uh, from my, si my side of the game and anyone else who um, joins later. And then you can turn that back on from game settings anytime you want. You can turn this on, on and off inside of a game session just to keep things um, secret for a while and then bring them back um, or just leave it off forever, turn it on. It's a setting for a reason. You can use it how you'd like to. Um, there's some more enhancements we could do to this to help enable um, like play by post style of games. We'll probably get to some of that later on. I don't think we're gonna do anything for that in V1, but it is not um, outside the realm of possibility for uh, enhancements that we bring to this in the future. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's talk about sharing game invite links. If you've used Alchemy, you've probably come across this before, um, but I'm gonna walk through it a little bit right now. When you create a game, it gets a game invite link to send to your players. You saw the pop-up for that just a few moments ago. You can also get to that from the players tab of the game settings. This link up here at the top is the link you can use to copy and paste to your friends. And when they follow this link, they will join your game automatically if they're signed in. If they're not signed in, they'll be prompted to sign in. If they don't have an account, they'll be prompted to create an account. All that good stuff so that they can get into your game as quickly and easily as possible. Now, here's where we had some problems with this. Uh, the letters that we used in this invite link um, included the dot character, and in some cases, you could have a player invite link generate with a dot at the end of it. And that seems fine. It's actually valid. Um, you know, in, in internet standards, it's fine to have a dot inside of a link like that. However, some messaging apps like Discord, for example, will take that dot off of the end of the link uh, and actually turn it, thinking that it's part of a sentence, they would just turn it into a link without the dot on it, thinking the dot was the end of your sentence. Um, and then your player invite link wouldn't work. So we have um, removed dot from the characters that can generate here. Uh, so you'll no longer have player invite links with a dot in them. And uh, we also ran a migration to update any links that had been generated out there in the wild, including a dot at the end, um, and replace that with a random number. So if you did have a game that was in this state, you can now uh, head into this spot to find your updated game invite link that no longer has a dot at the end of it and share that out with your players. What's coming up next? I'm glad you asked. So if you persist journal messages to your game, um, they are forever. Uh, these messages are going to be there forever. You cannot remove them at this point in time. However, we are very, very close to shipping the ability for a game master to go in and delete any message that's in here. So um, we're just settling in on the final design for that. Pretty much all the functionality is in place. We're ready to ship it um, after we kind of polish up the UI and the user interactions there. So you'll see us shipping that out sometime in the next week. Um, you'll be able to delete messages from your game and keep that journal chat log focused. We are also working hard on some tactical mode upgrades. I've got some big upgrades planned for this um, panel. They're almost ready. We'll have a new toolbar here with all the map configuration you could ever want. We'll have opacity sliders for your grid or just one slider to change the opacity of the grid. We'll have an inversion switch to make it dark or light. Um, we'll have three different grid types, uh, square, flat hexes, and pointy hexes. Um, if anybody knows like the proper name for hexes that are oriented with the pointy bits up and down and hexes that are oriented with the flat bits up and down, let me know in the comments because that's what I'm referring to them as. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, those, are, those settings are going to persist to the scene, so you'll be able to define those as a game master 
and have that all set up on your scene for the players. Uh, but then the player is also going to have the ability to adjust some of those themselves, things like the opacity and the color of the grid, um, whether it's dark or light, sort of accessibility features on your end of things to make sure that you can see the grid as well as you can. I know it's a common complaint that our grid is very hard to see, um, so that will be fixed very soon. The other exciting thing that we broke ground on this week inside of Alchemy HQ is Pathfinder 2. So we have officially started building out support for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This is going to be a long haul. We have a lot of work to do for Pathfinder 2, but we are in the thick of it now, and um, we should have some things to share soon. Uh, I don't know if there will be anything um, visible maybe to founders in the next, uh, I don't know, months probably. <laughs> Uh, but we'll continue to share kind of inside sneak peeks of the progress of that, probably here on the devlog um, as we make progress on Pathfinder. Uh, and we have a bunch of other systems to support for V1. We'll be getting into those soon and at the same time as some of the Pathfinder stuff, so there will be a lot of system support to share. Let's take a look at the roadmap. Sync up on that here in the what's new modal on the roadmap tab we've got um, some ux improvements we're going to be working on right click actions menu uh, here in this next couple of days i think i'm going to be working on that um, we have the grid config stuff that i mentioned um, that is nearly ready to go just a few finishing touches to put there in terms of how it looks and how it works um, we're working on system support for 12 new game systems in support of our v1 kickstarter uh, we're also working on deleting journal messages. I talked about that already. Um, and then we have a few things here that are new, things like um, streamer mode, that stream-friendly pop-out window. I wanted to make sure that was captured on our roadmap, um, as well as some account management stuff that really is um, definitely like a V1 product must-haves, things like changing your password while you're logged in. Uh, and you know, security stuff like if you change your email address, send your old email address a confirmation of that just in case something fishy is going on there um, and other kind of security related emails for your account. Um, we'll definitely be spending some time making sure the account management stuff is buttoned up before the end of V1. Um, we probably have a couple other items to add here, but we'll get to that in another episode. As always, you can check this roadmap out yourself from the sidebar, that what's new flask. Um, it's in this roadmap tab. So take a look at it anytime. All right, let's jump into some questions and answers. We've got one question submitted on the Q&A form. You can find a link for that form down below. Ask your own question, and I will go through it in a future episode of the Devlog. This is the wrong universe. Let me go back over here to the Devlog Q&A universe. There we go. Devlog 10. That's this episode. Okay, Wes asked, you already announced some Magpie games. Will Avatar Legends be added? I think its game style and alchemy are a perfect match. The answer to this one is yes. We have the base game and Republic City in our hands. We just have to schedule it out and fit it in with the rest of the things that we're working on. Um, we don't have a like an ETA for this, but it's not going to happen before V1. I can pretty much guarantee that. Mm, I mean, you never know. But I really don't see this... Uh, interrupting our flow with regards to the v1 roadmap and all of the titles that we need to support there so uh, that's the answer to that yes and soon with a tm all right let's switch gears over into the alchemy rpg a reimagined virtual tabletop kickstarter campaign so this has been live for a few days now and uh, we are blowing through the stretch goals um, our next stretch goal to unlock is Vampire the Masquerade Alchemy Enhanced Edition, uh, the Alchemy Enhanced upgrade to that title at 400k. We've also got a locked and hidden stretch goal here at 450k. But I have some news just in from the Chief Leaks Officer himself, Chris. He's informed me that the 500k stretch goal, not the 450, but 500k, if we can get there, we are going to give everybody a copy of... Pathfinder Kingmaker, Alchemy Enhanced, along with your, your pledges. Um, I forget which tier you need to be on to get the, the stretch goals for the enhanced stuff, but I think it's like maybe 50 and above. I don't know. Details are in the, the Kickstarter page, but I'm here to tell you it's Pathfinder Kingmaker for that 500k stretch goal. Okay, that's all for this episode of the Alchemy Devlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, 
head on down below, hit the like button, subscribe for future episodes of the devlog so you can stay up to date on what we're doing uh, every every fortnight, um, every two weeks, I guess, uh, on here in Alchemy Land. Um, and uh, let us know down below in the comments what you liked about this episode, what you liked about these updates, and things you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. Let's go play some games.